We've been very excited, you can hear it in my voice about this, but there are challenges. The method has challenges. And I'm listing them here because that's what I want to talk about now and close with. Time. If you didn't take it away yet from those slides I've shown you, it takes us right now our best. It's about three to four weeks. You give me a sample today, or you do it, start a sample today, it'll be three to four weeks before you have stem cell count. And there are a whole lot of reasons why that's just really a problem for a really good tool. There are also counting errors. I put this in parentheses, not because we make errors, but because we also now have relationships with academic groups where they do all of the serial analysis, they send us the data, and we do the analysis for them. And right now, by the way, we're doing that in collaborations to no charge. Um, the problem is, is that that's a lot of counting over time, and we're finding that errors get made. So it's, it's an error prone. And then it's expensive, because there's all of this cell culture going on, and those of you who've done it know, even when you're working with something like fetal calf serum, it's expensive, but go to purified growth factors, and it's astronomical. So we need to make it faster, and we need to reduce the cost. And I'm gonna tell you about how I think we've done that. So this is the slide I started you off with. I told you about the fact that there ought to be some function here, some algorithm. We couldn't even imagine how to put all these things together into that, although I have been thinking about it, I couldn't figure it out. So simulation solved that problem. But now, we're at a new place. We started out with measured factors and unknowns. Now we have measured factors, and we have discovered these other factors. <clears throat> I still couldn't figure out how to write an algorithm. <laughs> um, but it occurs to us that there should be some function of a simple three-day or two-day population doubling study. Just grow cells for two days, determine how much they double. That tells you the stem cell fraction. And what I want to tell you now is that we have found such algorithms. And the answer was in the data. I've been showing you these types of plots here with stem cell number with time. And I want to say something else, too. I've been saying this to people because I think it's true. If I had been in an academic laboratory with talented people like Ruspa Takizadeh, we would have known this three years ago. Because students would have seen it. I didn't. And when you see this, you're going to say, gee whiz, how'd you guys miss this? All right, so we can also look at not the number, but the percentage of stem cells over time. I showed you one of these traces earlier. We, just, we know the total cell number at every point, so we can calculate the percent. But there's a piece of data, we don't put it in our reports, I don't think about it anymore, that turns out to be pretty important. It's this data set here. This is the change in total cell number over time. This is the computer simulation. But I just want to tell you, the computer is simulating something that we actually measure. So think about what a serial culture is like. You put cells in culture, they grow. In this case here, in the early phases, they fill up the dish, they can't grow anymore, so they stop growing there. Okay, and then we come along, we count them, we know that number, and then we split them, and we know this number. During the next period, they grow again. We know the new number. If you know two differences in cell number and time, you know the population doubling time. So this is simulated, but we also actually know it in real life. So we know the population doubling time as a function of stem cell fraction. Interrogating that relationship, if there is a function there, we would discover it. So that's the basic idea. Relate this population doubling time, which we can calculate, to the stem cell fraction that we have found with our powerful method. We can find this function, and I'm going to show it to you now. They look like this. This is three independent studies with different tissues for stem cells. Some of them I've shown you. And we're looking at the stem cell fraction from our computing versus the population doubling time at each interval. And they all have that characteristic look. As the doubling time increases, the stem cell fraction goes down. Less stem cells, less doubling. And the reason I'm confident that we have algorithms is because we can linearize this data quite easily. And with the same conversion factor, we get these plots. So we have this algorithm now where if you put in the population doubling time, you get out this other factor, which is based on stem cell fraction. And we get these nice, fairly well specific linear plots. They're not the same. They're going to be different for different stem cells and different for different conditions. But once we've got one, I can talk about this slide. We think this is the next generation of stem cell counting. 
So first we have to do a foundational alpha sim test analysis like I've shown you. We've got to do one of those studies that takes three to four weeks. And then with that data, we will generate the population doubling time stem cell fraction algorithm. We'll determine what that is, like the ones I've shown you. And let me just say, the ones I showed you were done, they're actually done graphically. We're just working up to develop software to do that in a computed, automated fashion. There'll be a lot more uh, statistical significance there. But it, once we have the algorithm, then we can just do it. Right now, we're at 72 hours. We can do a 72-hour growth study. And from that population doubling time, because of those conditions, we can get the stem cell number. It's going to be fast, so a few days as opposed to a few weeks. And it's going to be relatively inexpensive because there's not a lot of cell culture going on. There are some conditions, and we have to be wary of them. These algorithms are going to be very specific for conditions. They are, they're only going to apply for the same type of stem cell, the same culture conditions, because culture conditions changes all those parameters, and we know that. And it has to be in the same range of the passage of the algorithm. 